Because once I start to complain mm -hmm. about any of that, it starts to mess with my legacy. I didn't get nothing for training day. How about that? I didn't get a zero, but it changed my life forever. You didn't know who I was if it wasn't for a no paying job. First of all, it named somebody to play football for money when they start. You don't get no money. If I nod yes, I looked at the terms. I said, okay, you're gonna pay me four grand for two days. Okay. If I said okay, I can't come back later and be like, ah, oh, I only got four grand for that. That's what hey man, mean. that's what you presented. Right. There should be some kind of sanctions against that place until they make they make some type of change. You know how some big celebrities recently came forward to expose the injustices that happen in Hollywood on a day-to-day -day basis, specifically in the black community? I mean, we all remember the Club Shay Shay interview with Cat Williams, right? Well, it seems like he sparked something huge, because ever since that interview went live, huge people in the industry have come forward to support his claims. First, we had Terrence Howard coming to Tara G.P. Henson's defense, you know, after the whole color purple fiasco with Oprah, but now we got a new player in the game, but now we got a new player in the game, and it's none other than the muscle man of Hollywood, Terry Crews. He's on a mission to expose the disgusting dealings that are going down behind the curtains of Hollywood, and let me tell you, I am here for it. He's teaming up with Terrence and going on a rampage to expose the industry, Oprah, Winfrey, the whole nine yards. So fasten your seatbelts, folks, because I'm about to take you on a wild ride. But hold up. This isn't just about Hollywood's evil agenda to undermine black woman. Terry and Terrence are kicking off a much needed chat about treating everyone with fairness. They're not keeping quiet about the struggles guys endure in showbiz. These two are pushing for a Hollywood where everyone, and I mean everyone, gets a fair shot, no matter who they are. So. You know, Terry Crews recently shared his thoughts on all that buzz surrounding pay controversies, and he really honed in on Terrence Howard's claims about how he got paid for doing his thing in Hustle and Flow. Now, let's rewind a bit. Terrence Howard's been making headlines for a while, especially when he exposed Empire, claiming he didn't get his fair share in a lawsuit against CAA back in 2023. And when it comes to Hustle and Flow, he dropped a bombshell in an interview last year revealing he got a measly $12,000 for that Oscar-winning film. Can you believe it? And here's where Terry Crews steps in, adding his two cents to the whole conversation. Crews, the man with the charisma and the muscles, is throwing his perspective into the mix. It's like he's saying, hold up, let's talk about this. He's not just talking for the sake of talking. He's really putting his weight behind Howard's claims, shining a light on the need to address these pay disparities in Hollywood. So, as we navigate through the twists and turns of Hollywood's pay drama, Cruz is standing tall, supporting Howard and calling for change. It's not just about the dollars and cents, it's about fairness, equality, and making sure everyone gets their due in Tinseltown. And who better to add some punch to the conversation than Terry Cruz, right? The guy knows how to speak up, and when he does, Hollywood better listen. So Terry Crews recently chopped it up with Shannon Sharp over at Club Shay Shay, and naturally, the topic of Terrence Howard and the whole pay saga came up. In his usual candid style, Crews dished out his thoughts on the matter, giving us a peek into his perspective. As the conversation unfolded, Crews, ever the thoughtful speaker, made it clear that he gets where Terrence is coming from, but he's got a different take on the whole low-paying gig scenario. According to Crews, He's never treated the money he earned as some kind of horror story, and that's saying a lot, considering his earlier gigs, like an uncredited appearance in Training Day and a significant role in Blink-182's 2004 Down video. Here's where it gets interesting. Cruz believes in a saying that goes something like, you can't nod yes and mean no. What he's getting at is that if he accepts a gig with lower pay, he's not going to turn around and complain about it later. It's like a package deal for him, and if he's in, He's all in. And according to Cruz, this mindset has actually worked in his favor, helping him maintain a sense of gratitude in his work. In a world where pay disparities in Hollywood are causing waves, Terry Crews stands firm in his belief that you can't play both sides of the coin. It's not just about the money, it's about embracing the choices you make and finding fulfillment in the work you do. And for Cruz, that gratitude seems to be the driving force that keeps him going strong in the unpredictable world of showbiz. Cruz dropped some truth bombs during his chat with Shannon Sharp, and one highlight was his candid revelation about getting zilch for his role in Training Day. Yup, you heard it right, nada. But here's the kicker, it changed his life forever. According to Cruz, if it weren't for that no-pay gig, 
people might not even know who he is today. In his characteristic no-nonsense style, Cruz drew an interesting parallel between his acting journey and sports. He pointed out that when you start playing football or basketball, you're not rolling in the dough, you do it for the love of the game, and only later, when you climb into the ranks, do the millions start pouring in. It's a grind, a process, and according to Cruz, there's no shortcut to it. You can't just hop, skip, and jump to the money. But here's the twist. Cruz highlighted that people nowadays are trying to invent all sorts of ways to fast track their journey straight to the cash. It's like they want the reward without putting in the work. And for Cruz, that's just not how it works in the real world, especially in the world of acting. He went on to drop another money-related bomb, revealing that he pocketed a meager $4,000 for his role in Friday After Next. Now, that might sound like chump change, but here's the catch. That opportunity wouldn't have even happened if Ice Cube hadn't seen Cruz in the Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke-led training day. It's like the domino effect of the entertainment industry, where one gig leads to another, regardless of the paycheck. In the end, Terry Crews isn't just talking about dollars and cents. He's talking about the journey, the hustle, and the undeniable fact that sometimes the gigs that pay the least can open the biggest doors. It's a reality check in an industry where everyone's chasing fame and fortune, reminding us that success often starts with a foot in the door and not necessarily a fat paycheck. Reflecting on his journey, Terry Crews took a stroll down memory lane, reminiscing about his days as a security guard and how that unexpected chapter paved the way for his role in Training Day. It's like life's surprises. Sometimes the seemingly unrelated experiences set the stage for the big breakthroughs. Cruz also peeled back the layers of his early struggles and shared how the gig as a security guard eventually led him to the opportunity of a lifetime. Landing a role in Training Day, despite the absence of a paycheck, turned out to be a game changer for him. But let's not sugarcoat it. He acknowledged the harsh reality that not getting paid for such a significant role was, in his own words, super horrible. It's a stark reminder that even in the glitzy world of Hollywood, where dreams come true, the journey is often fraught with challenges and disappointments. Yet amid the tough times, Cruz found inspiration in unexpected places. He opened up about the profound impact of Denzel Washington, his co-star in Training Day. Cruz shared how Denzel's script, adorned with a biblical quote at the top, left a lasting impression on him. It's those small, powerful moments that can fuel a person's drive and determination, even in the face of adversity. So, yes, it was undeniably tough for Cruz not to receive compensation for his pivotal role in Training Day. I mean, that isn't the only horrible thing that's been done to him in the industry. Hollywood has also exploited Terry Crews in various ways. The actor has bravely opened up about a traumatic experience he endured, revealing that he was S.A. by a Hollywood executive. Such revelations shed light on the dark side of the entertainment industry and underscore the importance of addressing and preventing such abuses of power. His willingness to share his experiences not only brings attention to the prevalence of exploitation, but also contributes to the ongoing conversation about creating a safer and more accountable environment in Hollywood. And in Terrence Howard's corner, hip-hop mogul 50 Cent has emerged as a vocal supporter, extending a helping hand in the actor's ongoing struggle over pay related to his role in Empire. On multiple occasions, 50 Cent has publicly reached out to Howard, making it clear that he stands ready to offer his assistance and support. With a characteristic blend of determination and sincerity, 50 Cent has made bold promises, stating, I need the best actors, and I'm gonna pay them. This commitment, expressed just earlier this month, serves as a testament to 50 Cent's belief in fair compensation for talent and his willingness to step up in the face of industry challenges. As the public watches the drama unfold, 50 Cent's involvement adds another layer to the ongoing conversation about pay disparities in the entertainment world. His proactive stance not only highlights the significance of Howard's battle, but also underscores the broader need for transparency and equity within the industry. In this unfolding saga, 50 Cent emerges as a powerful advocate for change, using his influence to push for fair treatment and just compensation for actors in Hollywood. And this shouldn't be surprising for us because many other black artists have been screaming from the top of their lungs and have been getting ignored. I mean, Take Taraji, for example. Taraji P. Henson is also exhausted by the persistent issue of being underpaid. In a past Sirius XM interview with Gail King, the star of The Color Purple was questioned about rumors circulating regarding her contemplation of quitting acting. I'm just tired of working so hard, being gracious at what I do, 
getting paid a fraction of the cost. You get tired. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. The math ain't mathin'. During the interview to promote the film, which opened on Decantory 25, Henson, 53, had sat with co-star Daniela Brooks and the film's director, Blitz Bazawuli. She had explained that even if an actor were paid $10 million, the substantial number was quickly diminished. Know that off the top, Uncle Sam was getting 50%. Then you had $5 million. Your team was getting 30% of what you grossed, not after what Uncle Sam took. Now do the math. I was only human. It seemed every time I did something and broke another glass ceiling. When it was time to renegotiate, I was at the bottom again like, I never did what I just did, and I was tired. I was tired. It wore on me. What did that mean? What was that telling me? If I couldn't fight for them coming up behind me, then what the heck was I doing? The pay disparity for uh, black women, period, is horrible, and it extends to Hollywood as well. What broke my heart about seeing it is that Taraji's one of our treasures. You know what I mean? She's one of the ones that has been in the trenches for forever. She should be paid what she's worth. And the tears that she cried, they weren't just for her. The emotional moment unfolded as Brooks comforted Henson, who continued to express her frustration. Despite successes in films such as Hidden Figures and a commanding presence in Fox TV's Empire, Henson shared her ongoing dismay at being told that black actors and stories don't translate overseas. The fear that she had and the despair that she had was that she is not making enough to be able to tell them what they should be asking for. And she knows that if it's hard for her, it's even harder for them. So it just, it broke my heart. And I think that's why everybody's been responding and, and chiming in and ma making sure she knows that we love her and we support her and that we're walking the same path with her. I was tired of hearing that throughout my entire career, Henson had expressed 20 plus years in the game and I heard the same thing. I saw what you do for another production, but when it was time to go to bat for us, they didn't have enough money. And I was just supposed to smile and grin and bear it. Enough is enough. That's why I have other things, because this industry, if you let it, it will steal your soul. I refuse to let that happen. Bazawul chimed in, acknowledging the collective effort required to ensure Henson, Brooks, and Fantasia Barino we're all part of the new musical adaptation of The Color Purple. We had to fight hard for this, he affirmed. You have to be brave. You have to go with your heart, especially for black women. It was like you were never here. It's not enough to come in and be a director. You have to come in, be a therapist, be a friend, be a brother, be a champion. Understand that we have to break cycles. And what happens here is going to be an example. In a recent discussion with Variety as part of a sag after a conversation, Henson disclosed that she had seriously considered turning down the Oprah Winfrey produced The Color Purple due to pay concerns, aiming to set an example for her female co-stars. So why, why am I doing this? If it's all just for me, what the f why are you here? She emphasized the importance of taking a stand, stating, When, where's my raise? I haven't, I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. And almost had to walk away from Color Purple. Because you know what? If I don't take a stand, how am I making it easy for Fantasia and Danielle and Hallie and, and, and Felicia? Henson revealed in the interview, that she had not seen a pay raise since her lead role in the 2018 action movie, Proud Mary. Reflecting on her past experiences, she shared that in 2019, she was initially offered $100,000 for a role alongside Brad Pitt and Kate Blanchett in 2008's The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Despite receiving a bump to $150,000, it fell significantly below the $500,000 she had expected as a third build actor in a major studio movie, a role that earned her a Best Supporting Actress Oscar nomination. After all of this started coming to light, many people started sharing their experiences. One person wrote on X, looking at a clip of Terry Crews' interview with Shannon Sharp about not getting paid for a role, reminded me of a time I had to fight for my check when I worked on Law & Order one time. It took a year to get it. You gotta fight for yours. While some had a different opinion, one person wrote, Terry Crews putting too much emphasis on not getting paid for training day. Bro, you had 15 seconds with no lines, they didn't even have to give you a script, and this is nothing new. This is stuff that has been told to us for ages, but many of us chose to ignore the people who were telling the secrets. One main person who's been on the job to bring Hollywood down is Cat Williams. In a candid conversation with NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp on Club Shay Shay, comedy legend Cat Williams did not mince words as he delved into his views on what he described as 
the deviance and godlessness in Hollywood. The discussion, which aired on Wednesday, saw Williams expressing his expectations for prominent figures to face exposure in 2024, and he also touched on the role of race in cancel culture. According to the 52-year-old comedian, race is not the defining factor in the boundaries drawn by cancel culture. Instead, he asserted that the divide is between God's side and the other side emphasizing a distinction that goes beyond racial lines. Williams went on to share his personal experience of feeling blackballed after speaking out about Michael Jackson and R. Kelly. In his straightforward manner, Williams conveyed a no-nonsense perspective, declaring that individuals engaging in questionable behavior, whom he referred to as big deviants, would face repercussions in 2024. The comedian left little room for ambiguity, making it clear that he believes a reckoning is on the horizon for those he perceives as deviating from what he considers the right path. Williams didn't hold back as he targeted several other celebrities in his conversation with Shannon Sharp. The list included Ricky Smiley, Jussie Smollett, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Chris Ludacris Bridges. Williams went so far as to accuse Ludacris of making an Illuminati-type deal. In response to a question about whether he feared being blackballed again by powerful figures, Williams boldly stated, Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is, is to act like it didn't happen. Williams seemed to imply that those who may have made certain compromises in Hollywood are tasked with maintaining a facade and denying any acknowledgement of such deals. The comedian's pointed comments added an extra layer of intensity to the conversation as he delved into his beliefs about the alleged dealings and challenges faced by individuals in the entertainment industry. And Kat has made it a habit now to come on air and air everyone's dirty laundry because no one else seems to have the guts to do something like that. Williams just went off, you know? He's out here questioning the realness of success for some big names like Steve Harvey and Kevin Hart. And get this, he's not feeling the trend of putting black men in dresses, calling out Ricky Smiley and Tyler Perry for their roles, but that's not all. Williams is side-eyeing the industry for dodging specific claims, especially the ones against Harvey Weinstein, instead of dealing with the nitty-gritty. He's pointing out how they either celebrate success or call it bitterness. And he's got a point. Why aren't industry folks addressing his claims directly, especially the ones involving Harvey Weinstein? It's like he's saying, hey, let's talk about the real stuff instead of just brushing it under the fame and fortune rug. Williams is definitely stirring the pot and making us all think twice about what goes down behind the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. Now, after all of this, Terrence and Terry have had enough of playing by the industry's rules. They've faced the wrath of Hollywood, and now they're ready to let the world know the shit on the higher-ups who've been pulling all the strings behind the scenes. Terry, the powerhouse with a heart of gold, and Terrence, the seasoned actor with stories to tell, are teaming up to expose the puppet masters of Tinseltown. It's like they've declared, game over after dealing with the not-so-friendly side of the industry for far too long. These guys are on a mission. They've been through the Hollywood ringer, and now they're taking a stand. It's not just about them anymore. It's about exposing the puppeteers who control the narratives and dictate the fates of many in the entertainment world. So, what do you think? Is the injustice in Hollywood as big as Terry and Terrence make it out to be? Or are they getting ahead of themselves? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, Hit that subscribe button so that you never miss out on any new videos. And until then fam, keep it real.